assembly line and forward motor plant. What if there's no parts there? The car is moving down the line. The guys are kind of worse. The car keeps going, comes out the other end without a part. What if he stops it? Go to the bathroom and he didn't stop the line or didn't get anybody filling in his space. There's things missing. The car comes out the other end with things missing. Now, ladies, I want you to think about this question I'm asked. This is for the ladies, but I'm, I want you men to listen. But ladies, how many of you had your OBGYN or either he or one of his staff, a nurse or even the secretary, when you first started going to him as a young woman, was there, was there a time when he or, or one of his helpers spent 30 minutes with you or a group of women together, 10 women together, 20 women together, and told you how important it was for you to take your prenatal vitamins for six months before you get pregnant so you prevent birth defects? How many of you remember that conversation with your OBGM? Raise your hand. It never happened. Because your cervix and your breasts are the only thing he's interested in. Screening test for cancer and treating you for cancer of the cervix and the breast because that's where all the money's at. He could care less about what happens to your babies. And one out of 700 babies in America is born with a birth defect. And guess who has to pay for that? You. Guess who has to take care of this disabled child, this special needs child? One of my favorite advertisements on TV, it shows this very cute mother with a very cute baby who's born retarded and has all these problems. But she's saying how wonderful this insurance company is because she doesn't have to do anything to work or produce or anything. She just stays home all day and, and plays around with this kid who's disabled and retarded. All the nurses in the hospital, they wanted to be with him. They just loved him so much. And some of these birth defects are sort of not inconsequential, but they're things you can manage after the baby's born. How many of you ever heard of inborn errors of metabolism? Okay, I'll give you one you all know. How many of you ever heard of lactose intolerance? Raise your hand. Okay, you can't take milk sugar. You can't eat cheese and ice cream and milk without taking a lactase enzyme right? beforehand. Then you can go knock yourself out of that ice cream or you have to manage it. Well, these inborn errors of metabolism are caused by the mother missing something in her diet at the moment when the machinery that produces this lactase enzyme in your pancreas, your intestine is being formed. If it's not there at that moment, if your baby goes down the line, can't make its own lactase. Same with fructo fructose intolerance, same way with PKU. PKU, how many of you heard of PKU? That's when they stick the baby in the heel and they're born and they take a little drop of blood and they test it for phenylketoluria, which is uh, the inability to break down an amino acid called phenylalanine into its safe breakdown pieces, okay? And if you can't safely break it down, these unbroken down breakdown parts cause retardation. Well, you have to manage it, and so what happens here is uh, any manufacturer by law who manufactures a food in a bag, a bottle, or a can, or whatever, that they have to add phenylalanine to the recipe for some reason, they have to put a warning on it. PK patients, warning! This product contains added phenylalanine. And so if you have PKU, you've got to be trained to watch for that label. And how many of you have heard of type 1 diabetes? That's not genetic. It doesn't just happen. It's an inborn air metabolism. When the beta cells are being formed in the island of Langerham to make insulin, you're supposed to have about 50,000 of these beta cells per island of Langerham to have enough insulin. Well, when you have type 1 diabetes, you only have 5 or 10 instead of 50 to 100,000. Because mama was, was missing this stuff that was required to make this machinery, okay, to make insulin. And you can manage it. The baby's born, find out blood sugar is 900, he's passing out, you have to give him insulin. We can manage it. You see, that was caused by mama not having all 90 essential nutrients. Before she got pregnant. And then how many of you have heard of sickle cell anemia in the black community? Raise your hand. Okay. Now again, back in the 60s and 70s, I was finding sickle cell anemia in deer and frogs and, and white people. I'm saying, well, that doesn't fit the model. It's supposed to be a genetic thing in the black community. 
Well, it turns out when the hemoglobin forming cells and the bone marrow is being formed, if mom is missing something, they make incomplete, imperfect hemoglobin. Lance Pauling, who had two unshared Nobel Prizes, spent his whole life looking for the gene for six cell anemia, and he could never find it. You know why? It never existed. It's an inborn error metabolism. It's not a genetically transmitted thing. It's in this book. It was published in the Smithsonian Institute in 1983, and the Sickle Cell Foundation of Georgia contacted me in 1991 and said, we just read your book, and uh, is that true what you're saying? Yeah. Can you do this in people like you're working in animals? Yeah. It turns out that the same thing happens in white folks and black folks and yellow folks and red folks and so forth. It doesn't matter what your genetic color is, because um, hemoglobin is hemoglobin, bone marrow is bone marrow. But they couldn't have a black genetic disease being found in white people, so they give it a different name. It's called thalassemia in white people, it's called sickle cell anemia in black people. See, they had to protect that genetic theory, didn't they? Are we beginning to get the picture here? Same with Down syndrome. Down syndrome is not a genetic disease. It occurs in the first two or three minutes of pregnancy because of a zinc deficiency. And it's easily prevented. In the early stages, easily reversed. And about 12 years ago, I got a call from Lauren Knievel. How many of you ever heard of Evil Knievel, you know, the great daredevil? Well, his niece-in-law is named Lauren, and she called me up. She's one of our customers. I had never met her, but I knew she was one of our customers. And she told me, she said, Doc, I, I'm in trouble. I had two beautiful pregnancies, no problem with this pregnancy. Um, I'm two and a half months pregnant, and I didn't feel good, so I went to the doctor, and he listened to the baby, and he had a very funny heart murmur, he, he says, which is common in babies with Down syndrome, because they're, oftentimes babies will be born with a heart defect with Down syndrome, because it's also caused by zinc deficiency. And um, I'm concerned. And uh, they sent me to two different laboratories, each unknowing that the other laboratory is looking, and one did an amniocentesis, took fluid out of the amniotic sac, and they found the cells that showed that it had Down syndrome baby. I went to the other one, they did an ultrasound, said it had a Down syndrome baby, and everybody wanted me to have an abortion, I didn't want to do an abortion. And I read where you can reverse this and prevent it in animals with nutrition. Can you do that in people? I said, well, probably, but um, never been done. And people have done it in animals a lot, but not in people. Okay, we're going to do it. I'm going to be your first one. I said, well, we've got to do all this legal stuff. She said, there ain't no time for no legal stuff. We're not talking about chemicals here, are we? No, this is just nutrition. Okay, let's do it. So I gave her the 90 essential nutrients, 16 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, 3 essential fatty acids, and gave her some extra zinc. At the full term, nine months, she had a perfect baby, no Down syndrome. I've done it to many, many embryos since then, but they got to be before that 91st day. After that, you got what you got. 